What's up guys, Cody Bidlow with Athlete X coming at you with another video. In my previous video, I broke down the different categories of strength and power training, and today we're gonna to talk about emphasis over time. While you're here, please subscribe if you haven't, hit that like button if you like the video, and leave a comment in case you have any questions. Also, there's a link in the description below where you can sign up to get early access to a training manual I'm working on, which will be coming out here in the near future. Like I said in my previous video, you need to progress your training over time and have different emphasis throughout the year. In this video, that's what we're talking about. If you take a look at this chart here, we have on the left side, periods ranging from early preseason to late competition, and you can see that over time, things change. During the early off season, the strength emphasis is to introduce loading. That's where we're gonna do general basic or max strength prep work. Depends on the athlete, and we might introduce some low impact hopping exercises as well. On the track, we're going to focus on acceleration capacity, upright running capacity, and tempo endurance training. Special concerns are that we need to utilize running shoes, operate on softer surfaces such as grass, use shorter rest periods, and focus on reacquainting the body with sprint technique. Once we progress to the late off season, we're going to just progress loading. So if you're doing general strength, you might go to basic strength, from basic to max strength prep, from max strength prep to max strength, and we're going to progress hops to low impact jumps. So low impact jumps versus hops. A hop is very low amplitude. You're not jumping very high off the ground, but with a low impact jump, you might be doing a box jump where you're trying to jump as high as you can, but there's not a, you know, a heavy landing involved. Or you might do, you know, vertical jumps or something where you're only going to a height that you can jump to. So when you land, it's not anything above your basic capacity to load the body. You can only jump so high, so that's one way to, to minimize impact. Whereas with depth jumps, things where you're dropping off a higher height than you can jump to, the impact is really high. So during the late off season, you might progress hops to low impact jumps. On the track, we're gonna increase acceleration distance, increase upright sprint intensity, and maintain tempo endurance. So if you were doing 30s for your acceleration, we might extend that out to 40 meters. If you were doing upright sprinting, which you should be, we're gonna increase the intensity. So maybe you were doing 60s, but at 85, 90%, now we're gonna bump it up to 95% or higher. We're gonna to progress to the track for some sprint days, whereas previously we were on the grass. We're gonna to continue to use running shoes and focus on creating consistently high quality technique, even with fatigue or entering new distances. So you may be comfortable with your technique up to 40 meters, but we need to now maintain that to 60 or if you're running hundreds, you need to run that at 120. Whatever it may be, we wanna progress the distance, we wanna progress the intensity, and we wanna maintain technical skill when we progress. The same thing can be said for your lifts. When we progress those lifts in weight, we also wanna make sure that you're maintaining technique with that extra load or with the more reps or however you personally progress your training. Early preseason, that's where we're gonna progress and transition the loading. So we might transition from max strength prep to max strength or from basic to max strength prep. Same as before, where wherever you were, you're gonna wanna progress, but it just depends on what you're comfortable with, what your body's capable of, and where you are at in your own personal athletic journey. If you can't deadlift 100 pounds, you're probably not gonna do a lot of max strength work. If you could deadlift 600 pounds, maybe this is where you're gonna start bringing in some slower power work. Just depends on where you're at. On the track, we're gonna emphasize acceleration transitioning to speed. So this is where we're gonna to wanna to incorporate more of the upright sprinting at high intensities, thus upright sprint intensification. Short speed endurance can be introduced and tempo running is going to drop a little bit. So once you have that base of tempo running built, you don't need to do a whole lot of it to maintain those qualities. Frankly, you can maintain a lot of those qualities without any tempo running, but I leave it in there because a lot of people like to do it. Training loads begin to become more stressful by way of intensification. Managing muscle tone, being aware of soreness, and working with the body as it adapts is important. This is where foam rolling at night, going to bed a little bit earlier, making your room darker, not looking at screens within an hour of going to bed, all those things are gonna help you recover better because if you're sleeping well, you're gonna recover as best as you possibly can. And when you intensify loads, you increase volumes, you really need to focus on recovery. Late preseason, this is where we're gonna reduce the load a little bit and increase velocity. So max strength is gonna turn into heavier power work. Heavy power might turn into high velocity power and we're gonna introduce true plyometrics. One thing I forgot on the early preseason, we are gonna introduce joint stiffness strength work such as those Smith machine A holds or A switches, some seated calf work, things like that to improve joint stiffness primarily active joint stiffness. Shifting back to the late preseason, we do want to introduce true plyometrics in people who can use them. 
Not everybody can do true plyos. Don't take an elephant and make him do a drop jump. But if you have a gazelle, maybe they can't. Keep that in mind with incorporating any type of work. If you have a person who's 100 pounds, they probably can't do a heavy squat. If you have someone who's 300 pounds and a shot putter, they probably can't. So all of this plays into what exact things you select, but what you should take from this is the themes of progression over time. We wanna stabilize speed, so you wanna be very comfortable with speed at this point in your late preseason. If you're not, you might be running out of time. You gotta make sure that your top speed is on point when you enter competition, because ultimately in the sprints, whoever runs the fastest is probably gonna win. Yes, you need to maintain that speed. Yes, you need to accelerate to that speed, you know, as quickly as you can, but the person who runs the fastest is likely gonna win. So we need to make absolutely certain that your speed is stabilized and that your skill and technique at speed is at a point that you're comfortable with, that you can replicate, and that is just second nature. You're not thinking about it. We wanna introduce long speed endurance. So we're gonna progress those speed endurance volumes, speed endurance distances and intensities. And we're gonna make sure that, say we need to run 100 in the upcoming season, well, that you're really comfortable with 120s up to maybe 150. Just like you need to be prepared with your speed work by the time you hit competition, your speed endurance also needs to follow suit. One positive of emphasizing speed is that you will inherently improve your speed endurance to some degree, but at a certain point, you do need to introduce that longer speed endurance work. There are some things that true speed work simply cannot replicate that only a speed endurance run can. We wanna focus on transitioning the strength gain from previous periods into more explosive, higher velocity force outputs. Take the same, quote, feeling of high velocity power work and aim to feel this during acceleration. So if you do a power snatch where you're going from relaxed to 100% intensity in the matter of you know milliseconds, we wanna take that same feeling and incorporate that maybe into the block start. And if you're doing depth jumps at this point and you feel yourself bounce off the ground, you wanna feel that when you're in upright sprinting. So this is where we can start to take the things that we feel in the weight room, convert them onto the track, and hopefully start to see a benefit from that work that we've done. That training to perform, like I talked about in the previous video, we want to incorporate sort of a skill conversion type of concept, and we can do that by consciously saying, when you're in the blocks, you need to tap into what you tap into when doing that high velocity power work. In early competition, this is where you want to stabilize high velocity strength and power work, uh, maintain power loading in the early competition period, emphasize high velocity power and joint stiffness, and revisit heavy power from time to time. We're gonna increase the length of the speed work we do, so if you were doing 50s for speed, maybe we extend that to 60s. Emphasize race-specific speed endurance, so if you did go up to say 150s and you're a 100 meter specialist, maybe at this point you drop back down to 120s so that you're not working so much longer than your race distance that it becomes less specific. We wanna be able to be very strong to 100, but if you're a 100 meter specialist, maybe you don't need much beyond that. Now, if you're on the 200, that's a whole different ball game. We wanna specify for championships. So the early competition period is where we can prepare for back-to-back -back days or multiple rounds. So maybe you set up your practices in a way where you warm up, get to the point where you can do an all out 60, 80, 100, and then you plan for the next day to come back and do the same thing. And you do that a few times to prepare the body for doing that at say a championship. Or if you're gonna to go to a meet or a championship meet that has multiple rounds where you have to run multiple full intensity, full distance runs in the same day, you can figure out how much time do I have between those? And maybe once a week, we focus on replicating that type of environment, that type of output. So that way you're specifying for the demands of your championship meets, which is where you need to perform your best. And you take that concept of how am I gonna be running at the meet? How can I incorporate that into my practice? Early competition periods is where we're gonna to wanna to do that. You can do some of that in the late preseason as well, but you definitely wanna get it done before you're going to the championship. If it's a championship week and now you're doing that, it's probably too late. Early competition is where we aim to finalize any less specific loading, such as power work, plyometrics, etc. Ultimately, this is the last time where any further development can occur. As such, this is the last period where we can touch upon lagging qualities. Additionally, we wanna prepare the athlete for the demands of the championships. By modifying workouts to develop specific capacities such as being able to handle repeated rounds within a day or back-to-back -back days of sprinting. So like I said, we want to prepare the body for the demands of competition 
once you're in the early competitive periods, that's where that stuff needs to be getting finalized. For late competition, we want to deload and maintain qualities. Lower volumes of power work can be incorporated. Eventually, they will probably drop off completely. We want to minimize tissue breakdown, so that's where doing heavy eccentrics, long time under tension lifts, high volume lifts, a lot of high volume running, all that stuff causes tissue breakdown, and we want to minimize that because we don't want to be running into issues where there's a risk of injury or the body thinks there's a risk of injury and then gets tight or inhibits movement. We don't want any inhibition going on, and the number one way to inhibit movement is by having either an injury or something that feels like it's going to turn into an injury. We also want to maximize the state of readiness, so that's where fatigue management, proper sleep, and how you organize the week is very important. Do you feel totally terrible after taking one full day off and then going and sprinting? Maybe you need to do something on the day before your meet. On the flip side, if you do anything on one day and then you go sprint the next day, you feel terrible, well maybe you need to rest completely. That's where you got to figure out within yourself or with the athletes you work with how they respond to training and incorporate their own individual timelines into their training as they approach late competition championship periods. We need to specify all loading parameters, manage fatigue for competition, and work strengths to enhance confidence. Specifying all loading parameters, that means we're going to be focusing just on the most specific things. If you're a 60 meter runner, you're not going to be running 250 meter special endurance runs. It's not specific. On the flip side, if you're a 200 runner or a 400 runner, you are going to be doing those things. So we need to specify loading parameters. In the gym, that could be, if you're a 60 meter runner, maybe you do one clean grip high pull followed by a depth jump. You know, you're staying in the realm of producing power and high velocity power. You can pick and choose what you do at this point. I would suggest staying away from anything that's gonna either make you really sore, make you tight, make your joints hurt, anything like that. So just be very wary. If anything, specifying your loading parameters means dropping lifting and only sprinting. And by doing that, you're ensuring that the stimulus that's going into the body near the latest periods of competition is purely high velocity sprinting. If you do that and you manage the volumes, not only are your athletes gonna feel good, they're gonna be ready and confident because they know they can do it, they're comfortable in what they're doing, but you're also probably gonna maintain better muscle fiber types because you're not doing any of that slower lifting and you're not doing excessive volumes, which tells the body you need endurance, which tells the body to shift away from type 2X or type 2B fibers to maybe type 2A. Special concerns for late competition, Late competition is when everything matters more. Any work that causes tissue damage, hot spots of pain, or excessive tension ought to be avoided as much as possible. The work is basically done at this point, and the primary goal is to enter competition in a state of readiness to compete. If you do anything, deload, do less work, only do enough to maintain the qualities you need to run fast and in order to manage fatigue properly and their state of readiness. You know your athletes best, and if you're an athlete, you should know yourself best. So figure out prior to this period what it takes for you to run the fastest. Maybe that's doing some 50% power cleans the night before. Maybe it's doing a heavy power clean the night before. Maybe it's doing nothing for two days. Whatever it is, you gotta figure out what works for you or your athletes, and in the late competition period, honor that. Don't do anything you, th you think you should do. Do what you know is right and you know is least likely to cause any issues. There's nothing more to gain at this point other than by being rested, being in a good state of readiness, and minimizing any risk of injury. So in the late competition period, it's all about peaking and it's all about preparing the athlete to be ready. There's nothing more to develop. There's nothing more to gain out of getting stronger. All that's done. You can revisit that in the off season. But for now, you need to prepare for competition get ready, and be in a state of readiness so that when the gun goes off, you're ready to go. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys appreciate this video and enjoy it. In the next video, I'm going to talk about exercise selection for strength training, power training, and special strength work. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell, you'll get a notification when that comes out. Also, don't forget, if you want to get that training manual early and cheaper than anyone else, click that link below to sign up. Just leave me your email address and I will make sure to contact you when it's ready. If you like this video, hit a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you next time.